Hey everyone, welcome to the Foy Mechanic channel. My name is Beacon. Today's video is a build slash modification tutorial for the UltraPoi Orb Pro models from ultrapoi.com. I did one of these videos for the original orbs and you can check that out on my YouTube channel. In that video, it's gonna have specific information to that setup. So if you have that set, go watch that, but also uh, watch this because there's a lot of valuable updated information. This is gonna be a long video because I have a lot of information to share and not all of it's gonna apply to you. So if you wanna skip ahead, look in the video description where I've left timestamps and it'll allow you to skip to the section you wanna to go to. Uh, I guess the first thing I'm gonna show you is just uh, the basics, how to take them apart and how to put them back together and then we'll go from there. All right, to disassemble these, it's rather easy and we're gonna start off with the head first. Pinch the rope about an inch back and then push. That will cause the rope to get stiffer because the rope is bunched up and then you can push the capsule out the top. Now, if you're using a different style rope or if uh, you're having a hard time getting the capsule out because the head's cold, what I recommend doing is holding it like that, pushing your fingers against your palms like that, and then it'll allow it to come out. There's two O-rings on here that are easy to get off just by rolling it off. Take the rope off like that and then roll this other one down. This will open up and allow you to take your battery out. This is a rechargeable battery uh, you can get from UltraPoi and that allows you to just swap these out if you don't want to charge them while you're at a festival or whatnot. Uh, the chip will pop right out like that. Make sure that when you put it back in there that it gets aligned. There's little indentations for the chip to sit in and make sure that your USB port is matched up with the slot on the case. When you're putting this back in, make sure the positive side, which is that small post right there, is facing towards the button. And then stick that together like that. Make sure that it is uh, closed all the way around and nothing's sticking out. You can roll that on just like that. Now the head on this, uh, or the hole in this head for the rope is big. So that means that you can pop the rope out really quick and swap out tethers, which is very nice. Now I'm gonna put the ring back on my rope, stick that inside there and then roll that back on and then push it in like that. On the handle side, the handle hole is smaller than the rope, so it's definitely stiffer. Um, you can push it together like that, like you did on the head and it'll pop the tabs up enough to pull these out. But if you're having a hard time getting this out or you're using a rope that doesn't, uh, you know, bunch up, what I recommend doing is twisting a couple times like on this style and then pushing like that until you expose the tabs and then you can pull the whole thing out uh, or do that like on this one and it'll pop out without even needing to pull the tabs. This O-ring is a bit harder to get off because there's not really a spot to get your fingernail under. I recommend trying to get it off that way if you can, but if not, you can go like that as long as you're careful and it will pop the chip right out. Pulling this out is rather easy, just go like that. And then when you're putting it back in, have the cap 90 degrees to the hole, push that in and then roll it right in and then twist and push to get that up. Now, when you're putting the chip back in the case, make sure you do this right. I've seen damage happen to the USB port if the port isn't aligned with that slot right there. If it's just slightly off like that and you put this all back together, um, you're putting unnecessary force on that and uh, it can damage it. So make sure it gets in that slot. You'll kind of feel it click into place and then the chip won't move. Make sure the O-ring is on your rope. Stick the rope in. Stick that on, and this will just roll right back into place. Make sure once again that that is still aligned, and then pull the rope to put the case back. So you can add a little bit of extra weight to the handles or your heads. With the handles, I'd say you have about an eighth of an inch to work with, and with the heads, probably around a half an inch. You can actually get a little bit more space in there if you don't use this ring, but uh, if you do that, you need to make sure you've made your cap really well. It needs to be strong enough, thick enough, and wide enough that it's not gonna break apart or uh, fall through that hole. Now, if you want just really small amount of extra weight, these little rings right here weigh, I think, around a gram, and you can put uh, three of them on there to fit inside your handle, and I'd say, 
maybe five to six of them inside your head. You could also use washers. I would recommend using a uh, lock washer. It's a heavier um, and thicker uh, washer than a regular one. It does have a little bit of a curl to it because it's spring loaded. So when you get them, put a pair of pliers on both sides and then twist it back to flat. But those weigh uh, 1.8 to 2 grams, and they fit this cavity perfect if you get the right size, and they'll even stay in there like that. You can fit two of them in the handles and four of them in the heads. You could also use tungsten. Tungsten is uh, 1.7 times, I believe, uh, heavier than lead. So it's a lot of weight in a small package. They come in different sizes, uh, shapes, and weights. This is uh, fishing weight, but this is the, they use this stuff in all sorts of different industries. That is uh, about 3.3 uh, 3 to 3.5 grams. So you can only fit, because of its shape, one of them in there, and probably only one in the head. But they do make these little um, cylinders um, that uh, the Pinewood Derby race cars use. So you can find those online. They're 10 millimeters wide. This is a uh, 10 millimeter, or I'm sorry, 14 millimeter wide space. You'll probably have to wrap those in some tape to keep them from rattling around, but they do come in different thicknesses. But uh, what I'd recommend is something I just found yesterday. I'm super excited about this stuff. This is a tungsten putty, and that little piece right there weighs 28 grams. And uh, it's not as heavy as solid tungsten because it's got putty in it, but it is putty so it's awesome because it remains malleable it never hardens and you can you know pretty much take out little teeny incremental pieces of weight to get it just right this stuff will form to the inside of that uh, shell perfectly and uh, without using this ring and just the cap I was able to get these up to 10 grams heavier and 18 grams heavier with the heads now, if you really like a lot of extra weight, like me, um, in your handles in your heads, you can actually wrap your uh, solid tungsten with this. And of course, that starts to get up there in price, but I was able to get these up to, I think, 13.5 grams. And the heads, if you use those cylinders I was talking about, you can get those up, to, uh, or the heads probably up to, I'd say, 25 grams, something like that. Uh, this stuff cost uh, 11 bucks for... Um, one ounce but I think you can get them online for like two ounces for 15 bucks if you go to Amazon now if you're gonna be using something that uh, can fall inside this hole make sure that you tape this up or put a piece of uh, cardboard or plastic over it you don't want something falling down in there rattling against the board or even shorting it out now I'm curious to see if you guys uh, use something different uh, let me know in the comment section below what you use but uh, in the meantime let's get on to the next section So when you're using a synthetic rope, it can shrink over time, some more than others, depending on the material that it's made out of and the weave that they use. On the original Ultrapoi orbs, there was quite a bit of space in here because the chip was way back here. So what you could do is store your rope inside there, and then once the rope is shrank, you can pull any excess out that you need. Now, since this uh, has a much bigger battery and chip, there's not that much room to play with, but there is some. So what I would recommend doing is pulling that ring back away from your rope cap a little bit and then getting the cap to bottom out on the shell and making sure that your ring is bottoming out on the shell on this side. And that's how much room you have to play with. So you get about a half inch of extra rope to pull out once it's shrank. Now you can do this different ways. Um, you can use either a wire, uh, and if it's a flexible wire, you can wrap the wire around on this side, wrap it around the rope quite a few times, maybe all the way down and then back up. That way, this doesn't wanna slide down at all. Um, you could probably do a zip tie if you wanted, um, if it would fit inside the shell, or you can use tape. I'm using electric tape, and I'm not using the right stuff. There is a smaller uh, or a narrower, electric tape that would probably work a lot better but this is what I have so um, just wrap it quite a few times and tighten up that you don't think that ring will come loose and then cut the excess amount off the top of the cap making sure not to hit your rope and then there you go and once it's shrank just uh, pull the excess tape off and slide the ring down. 
Now, if your cap is done right and it's wide enough and, and thick enough, you really don't need this ring. So you could even probably cut the ring off with some needle nose, or I'm sorry, with some uh, wire cutters if you wanted and give you a you know fraction of an inch extra if you need. But um, with any type of synthetic rope, I recommend just having the set made just a little bit longer, um, uh, depending on how much it shrinks, but uh, just make it a little bit longer and expect it to shrink a tad bit. Both your head and your handle cases have a 3 8 inch hole for that size rope. You can get a bigger rope in here, but you got to be able to modify that hole. You could probably do a 7 16 inch rope pretty comfortably, but uh, if you're doing a half inch, I would say you really have to be confident in your skills just because uh, the more material you take away in here, the less of a lip you have to uh, have your rope hold on to. So you got to be able to get your rope cap on the end of your rope absolutely perfect so that it will hold on as it should. Before doing any modifications, make sure to take the chip out. You don't want to damage that. Now you can do it with a drill or a Dremel, but I definitely recommend the Dremel over this. Um, the reason is if you're using a drill, um, a lot of times the drill bit can actually mar up that surface and uh, make it so it's not a really smooth hole which can damage your rope. It can also grab really quickly and go in and damage the, uh, the inside of your case where your chip uh, sits on. Um, and it can also grab onto the edge of the, the case here. Um, if you're going to do it with a drill bit, I recommend taping this extra tight or better yet, getting a hose clamp, putting over it, and that way when you're drilling it, it won't separate the case. Now, most kits don't come with, or drill bit uh, sets don't come with a 7 16 inch drill bit, which is the size I use, and that's another reason I recommend using a Dremel. A Dremel, you can get this the exact size you want uh, and no more than you need to. Um, so, I'm going to show you how to do this. I'm actually going to do it on an old chip because... Uh, or an old case because I don't really want to run my new uh, case since it is slightly different. Now, um, this is going to be a slight bit bigger than my uh, hole right there. So what I recommend doing is starting on one half first until it, uh, you know, matches up with this, this shape and then doing the other. Like that. And then this should sit inside there. And once you start going, you just got to, you know, take your time uh, going back and forth until you figure out if the, uh, the rope actually fits because you can definitely take out too much if you're using something like this. And kind of just go round and round if you can. And there you go. Now this is just a slightly thicker uh, 3 8 inch rope. I've done a modification on the inside of that rope, so I didn't have to take out too much material in here. If you got to take a lot of material out, you can get uh, a barrel sander uh, attachment for that, which uh, will do it much quicker. Um, same thing for this right here. You just go round and round. I've already modified this one, so it is a bit bigger as it is. I think I could fit my 7 16 inch rope in there if I wanted. You can see that one has a lot of slop. Now, if you're wanting to make sure that your rope uh, fits inside the hole and the hole's not quite as big as you, you want it, what you can do is take some floss and then tie it off on here and then wrap it over and over and over until you get a line going down this way and then a line of floss going back and then tie it off and that will constrict the rope if you've done it tight enough that way when you put it in here you're not pinching fibers because you have a bunch of fibers it can make it so that it uh, just wants to pinch it and flatten it out and your case won't close To get a half inch size rope like this into a small hole like that, you're going to want to make sure you get a taper on the end of your rope, otherwise it's going to be extra difficult. There's two different types of rope. There is a solid braid, which means that all the fibers are woven together and it's just one material. And then there is a double braid like this, which has a weave on the outside and then a core on the inside. If you have this style of rope, go to the other end and then pull out about a you know, half inch or so of your core. Pinch right there and then pinch as you're pulling up on the rope. 
And what that's going to do is pull your cord down into the jacket a little bit. Then take some electrical tape. And I use electrical tape because it allows you to get a nice tight uh, wrap on it because the tape stretches. Tape that out to the end. And now you have a cone. And then stick one side in and twist as you're pushing it through. And there you go. Now, if it's extra hard to twist and get in, you can put just a sad bit of like a chapstick on it, just a real small film, and it will slide in quite easily. Now, if you have a style of rope that is the solid braid, you can put a, uh, a cone on it or a taper by cutting at an angle like this. And then taking your tape and wrapping it again out to the end like that and then twisting as you're pushing through and there you go when you're putting a new rope in your setup you got to make sure that it has a cap on the end that fits inside the shell and keeps it from pulling out now you'll either put an epoxy cap or you're going to melt a cap on the end of your rope depending on the type of rope that you use with this rope that the Orb Pro comes with and the previous model Orbs, they are a good synthetic rope that uh, allows you to melt the cap on the end quite easily. But there are certain ropes like VPC, which is what I use, that has a different uh, type of material for the core than the jacket. So they melt at different temperatures, meaning that oftentimes your cap won't form properly and your jacket and your, uh, your core doesn't actually bond together. And so I definitely don't recommend um, melting those. I've seen a lot of people do it and a lot of them fail. So with that and any type of natural fiber like cotton, you're gonna wanna use an epoxy cap and I'll show you how to do that here shortly. The preparation method is the same for both of these. Now there's two different ways of doing it. The first way is if you have this type of a rope that has a ring on it, um, what you're gonna wanna do is get some tape, like an electrical tape and Wrap around there nice and tight a couple times and then make sure your ring is as straight as you can get it. So spin it like that and make sure that it's not wobbling around on there because once you start melting it to the ring, you are you're going to basically be forming the cap to match the angle of the ring. And if it's at a weird angle, it's just not going to sit right. The reason I use tape on this is because when I cut this, it's going to be a super straight cut and the fibers aren't going to be frayed out. So I'm going to go about a quarter of an inch uh, or a little bit more maybe above that ring or actually probably a quarter of an inch. I was about an eighth a second ago. So then you're going to take uh, your tape off and that's going to want to fray out, which is what you want it to do. Next, you take a lighter and start melting it. Now you're gonna wanna be careful with this light or not to get it uh, get the rope too hot. If you get it too hot, it can start to turn black. It can bubble or uh, catch on fire. If it's doing any of those things, you're most likely getting it too hot and that can make the fibers uh, brittle so the cap can break. So take your time, go around it. I wouldn't use a torch just because a torch will get it too hot. So I'm keeping the flame on the end of the rope there, but I am slightly touching the edges of that uh, rope so that the cap is gonna melt properly. Once it gets hot enough, press it against a metal object like that. And there is your cap. Now, if you have a rope that doesn't have a cap on it, or I'm sorry, doesn't have these rings on it, here is the next method. You're going to want to get some tape, wrap it around it a couple times, and then take the tape and go right up next to where the other piece ended and wrap around it a couple times again. And then take your knife, go out a quarter of an inch, cut that, and then you'll have this little strip you pull off, and then there's your fibers again. Once again, I'm going to melt it and take my time going all around it. And what happens, like in this case, where I cut the fibers a little further away from the tape than I probably should have, 
it makes that cap get extra wide, which is fine. It's something you can definitely adjust here in a second. So do pay attention to that. So I've got that all nice and melted. Also pay attention to the inside of the core. If you see any fibers that don't look wet because it's been melted, then you're, you haven't held the fire on there long enough. Now I'm gonna press that against the metal object. And that might be a little too big. So I'm gonna have my shell handy and it is a tad bit too big, so I'm gonna stick that in there while it's still a little bit warm, pinch it together, and then twist. And what that's done is left a cap that matches the inside of my shell perfectly. And then once you're done with that, you can just uh, peel the tape off, assuming that you haven't actually melted the rope to the tape. And there you go. All right, so, I prepared my rope just like I did with the other rope that I melted by uh, cutting about a quarter inch uh, away from the tape here, leaving that much uh, fibers exposed. I'm going to be dipping this into the epoxy that I'm going to mix up, and then I'm going to use the shell uh, as a mold. So I'm going to put the rope in there and put, close the shell around it. That way the uh, cap will match the inside of this uh, case here. Now, um, you're going to want to use some kind of uh, grease or something on, on this to help it release. So what I did was I got this chapstick here and then I dipped my Q-tip in it and I went and covered all the surfaces from about here back, including the uh, rope hole right there and then the grooves on the side where the two shells meet. That way when you put it together and it solidifies, it doesn't stick to the case. Now, get yourself some epoxy. There's all sorts of different stuff out there. This is the best stuff that I have found as far as something that actually does cure pretty quick. This is DevCon Home 5-Minute Epoxy. It's the clear version, which is uh, not the gel version. I get this at Ace Hardware. I think it's probably around, uh, I don't know, uh, eight, 6 to $8 a tube nowadays. Now, you can get a smaller version um, that has a mixed tip on it, which allows you to uh, just press the back button there and it pre-mixes it for you. That's pretty good, but uh, I use the bigger stuff here just because you get more for the price that you pay and it gives you time to do each um, each cap because if you're using that mixed tip on uh, one rope and then you have to use another mixed tip on another rope, it's just kind of a waste. So uh, make sure that you get all the air bubbles out from down here. Um, make sure they're all up to here or you turn it up like that and you get all the air bubbles out because you want to make sure that you're getting an even mixture. Um, if you get too much of one side and not the other, it's going to be too gummy or something like that and won't cure. So go ahead and I don't need too much here. Something like that. Make sure to wear gloves. This stuff sucks. Super, super sticky. And you don't want to get your rope all messed up either. So, um, Get a flat mixing uh, device like that. I just used a chopstick that I cut the ends flat with. And make sure that when you're mixing this, you periodically scrape off the stick so that you don't have any unmixed stuff on it. And then keep mixing it like a batter. Do that a few times until you're confident that it is mixed perfectly. Okay, next I'm going to dip this in here and make sure to get all the fibers nice and wet. Um, try not to get it on the tape if you can avoid it, uh, but make sure the edges are getting coated. And then this part is really important. Get yourself a toothpick and go in there and stab the center of this a whole bunch of times. And what that's going to do is drive the epoxy down in there enough that it's going to bond the, bond the core to the jacket. And then I'm going to take a little extra, I'm going to do that a couple times until I'm confident that it's nice and uh, coated there. All right, and I'm going to do this one more time where I dip it in the epoxy, rolling it so that the edges get covered and uh, trying to keep it from getting on the tape. If it does, it's fine, but um, now I'm going to stick that in there. And then stick the case over that. And then I'm going to spin this just a little bit. That way it uh, matches the inside shape of that. And then it's a five minute epoxy. So you could hold this for five minutes or wrap some tape around it. 
uh, but hold it up like that so that the epoxy doesn't want to drip down the sides. Okay, it's probably good enough, so take the tape off, and hopefully this separates easily enough. It always has a little bit of a tendency to stick somewhere. There we go. Now, I'm going to clean this up. I did this probably around the 7 or 8 minute mark, something like that. Um, if you do it too soon, um, it's still going to be sticky. If you do it too late, it's not going to be easy to trim this off like this. So um, I'm just going to keep doing this until I get it flat. Now, if I wanted to make it, uh, you know, thinner or whatever uh, to accommodate some weight and stuff like that, I can do that uh, with the Dremel once it's gotten, you know, completely cured, which means I'd probably have to wait another 20 minutes or so just to make sure it's hard as a rock. And it's a little tight. Um, Oh, it's probably because I'm using two different shells. Huh. Yeah. See, just like that. It's pretty much perfect. So there is the cap. Looks pretty dang good. Matches the shape of this perfectly. Uh, it could have been a little thinner if I wanted to, but uh, something to note is that uh, the shape of this, um, it has a little bit more of a cone shape where this has more of a 90 uh, degree shape. So you can use this as a mold for the handle side as well, or you can use the handle and make it a mold so that you don't have that little gap down there in the corners. If you do that, just make sure to you know, use chapstick on this really, really good. All right, before you put your second cap on the other end of the rope, make sure you've done two things. Uh, number one, make sure your handle is uh, fed through the rope. You probably should have done that uh, ahead of time, but... Um, if not, you're going to, you know, be pushing the big cap through and that's not going to be fun. Uh, number two, you got to make sure that the core and the jacket of the rope are the same length. Um, the way you do that is you pinch on the, uh, the cap end and then pinch and pull, uh, on the rope until you get to the end and then go and tape it where you think you want the length to be. And then do that one more time until, uh, you get it all the way out to the end and then cut it. Uh, if your rope is two different lengths, it's going to give the rope an inconsistent feel from one tether to the other. So you can put a swivel on your rope. It is a bit of a challenge with this, but it's doable. You just got to have the right tools to do so. I definitely recommend two pairs of needle nose pliers if you have them, or you might be able to do it with a pair of needle nose and a regular pair of pliers, uh, and you need a knife and a lighter. So that ring on the swivel is too small for this rope to fit through. So what we're going to be doing is pulling the core into the jacket a little bit and just using the jacket to go through that ring. Now, if you're doing that, that means you're going to have to pull the core out on the other side. So you have to do the swivels first, both sides, uh, you know, your handle and your uh, head side first before putting the handles or the heads on. Now, the first step would be to uh, cut your rope flush. You want to make sure that that core is nice and uh, straight. Go down to the other side, and then we're going to pull a significant amount. I'd say a good five inches or so, and then pinch and then slide your hand up the rope. And now the core is back here. Next, I'm gonna get some tape and I'm gonna go over this kind of loosely. It doesn't need to be on there that tight for this. And I'm gonna cut this at a pretty good angle. So about like that. And then I'm gonna take a lighter and run up and down that to try to get those fibers a little melted so they won't fray and then you can take your tape off. Next, start heating that with a lighter, go back and forth. And what the goal is, is to get uh, this whole thing sealed off on the end so there's no open hole there. Try not to get it too hot. It doesn't really matter on this part because this part is, you know, gonna be cut off eventually. Take a flat object and flatten it out on the end if you can, and then 
push those two pieces together. And the reason we're doing this is once you start pulling on this tail, you don't want a, uh, a random fiber to be pulled and then it just, you know, so when that happens, it just, uh, you know, makes your rope kind of messed up because uh, it cinches it up and you don't want it to be. Now I'm going to uh, have this facing down like that. I'm going to stick this ring on it. Be careful. If you've got this at a really fine point, it can be actually be kind of sharp. Next, take your swivel and get it on there like that. Now, feeding this rope through this rope is the goal, and it's a bit of a challenge. So what I recommend doing is you're going to create a little trough in here. So you're going to flatten the rope out and then kind of fold it in like a taco. And then take that point, and you want your swivel to be facing down for this. Take that point and stick it right in that trough. And that will allow this ring to kind of slide over, slide over a lot easier. Now, let me do that one more time. There we go. Then take a pair of pliers and you're going to slide that down. Now, if you're having trouble sliding it down, here's where the other pair of needle nose really comes in handy. I'm going to stick it on both sides, uh, or I'm going to basically touch the needle nose together. And if I have that gap in between there and that ring, when I pinch, now I'm going to use this and I'm going to kind of slide the ring through like that. I'm just using a twisting action, creating leverage. But the core is down here. So here's where some work begins, where you have to get the swivel as close down there as you can. So you're just going to have to work it bit by bit, uh, get your needle nose, go in between the two ropes like that, and then try to slide it down. You need to make sure that you're just on the rope side and not on that side because otherwise you'll pull that right back out. And you still got to be careful when doing this that you just don't accidentally pull the rope uh, tail out. Sometimes this is easy. Sometimes it's really hard to get it all the way down there. Use that same method right there to like bottom it out on that core. And now you got to get this swivel down as close as you can to that ring. And I'm kind of folding the rope as I go to make it easier to slide it down. Now before you get too far down, kind of flatten that rope back out because you don't want that divot down here. Uh, otherwise it's going to fit on your swivel a little weird. Using that leverage again, I'm going to bottom that out on that ring. There we go. I'm just using that lever, leverage action again like that. And then pull it nice and tight. Recheck that it's next to your core as it should be. And now you need to make sure that your swivel is in line with that rope perfectly. And right there it's at an angle and we don't want that because if you finish this off and it's at an angle, it means that it's your, your orbitals are probably going to kind of get out of whack when you start to pull on it. So twist it, make sure that that's looking pretty straight, which it is. And then we're going to cut this off about an eighth of an inch from your ring. Like that and then start to melt it. And once again, uh, make sure that you're not getting your rope too hot. If it starts to bubble smoke or catch on fire, that means it's probably gonna be brittle. And you, this is the part that probably gets the most stress on it. So you really wanna make sure that, you know, it's gonna be strong. So I'm going back and forth, try not to get that uh, flame anywhere near the actual rope. Kind of using the curvature of the flame as it goes up to uh, meet that rope, or I mean, meet the, the tail there. 
and then have a flat metal object handy. You can even use a spoon if you got it, and then um, you're going to roll that and flatten it. And you want to roll it because otherwise you're going to have these edges that stick out right here. Now, if you can see that, you can see that this has kind of created a little lip right here. That means that shouldn't pull back out because it's going to be touching that ring. You might have to go over it a couple times, but uh, that's how you do it. Now, uh, well, be careful. Once you get this done, don't pull on that tail down there because otherwise you're going to have to do all this again. Um, so pinch right here, pull and pinch at the same time. And uh, that's going to get your core and your jacket to be the same length and get this back to more of a stiffer state. And then I would wrap it up with tape really tight and then make your marks for uh, wherever you're going to cut it with the head or the handle on. So that is the Ultra Knob Pro Flex Handle. It's a 3D printed handle. It's got some nice squish to it. Uh, you'll take your cap and push through it if you haven't already got it done. And uh, yeah, installs pretty much the exact same way as the regular Ultra Knob Pro does. And make sure, once again, you get your chip aligned with that slot there. And that's in place. Pretty neat. So this is the egg knob, which is a 3D printed handle with a rubberized grip. Comes with a inline bearing for doing uh, nice orbitals and it just makes it so you can uh, spin without the rope getting bound up in the handle. It uses the .xl chip and it's a knob that I've been using since uh, we created it. I absolutely love this thing. I highly recommend it. Now uh, to get this to work on a rope, you're going to have to get the cap to mate against this inner ring perfectly. If uh, you're melting the rope, uh, a lot of times there's little imperfections and it almost looks like ripples on the back side of a cap, which means it's not going to sit against here perfectly. So in this case, I would definitely recommend using uh, one of these rings to sit against that. But we have to get the ring and the bearing on there and it's the same size as the rope. So what we have to do, just like creating the cone on the rope or the taper, you pull out the core on the other side uh, a little bit first and then pinch while you're pulling down the rope and it takes the core and moves it down a little bit. And if you're putting this uh, knob on, definitely do the knob before you're doing the head, otherwise you won't be able to do this part properly. So I got the taper, I've got the tape on there. I'm gonna put the bearing on and then pull it into place. And then I'm gonna put the ring on and pull it. Make sure you get past that core. It's a little tight to do so. But that's exactly where I want it. Actually, there is probably where I want it. And then I'm going to move the bearing up against the uh, ring and make sure that it spins. If your ring's slightly off, it, your your bearing is going to spin a little weird. It's not going to sit against it flush. So you need to make sure that it sits flush, otherwise it's not going to spin properly. Next, I'm going to go about a quarter inch above that ring, I'm gonna pull the bearing down a little bit because I'm gonna melt this now and I don't want the heat from the flame um, hitting that rubber part of the seal on the bearing because that can mess it up. So once again, using a lighter, I'm gonna go around this on the end of the rope making sure that everything melts. It should look kind of glassy if it's done right. Um, make sure that uh, you don't catch it on fire or that it starts smoking or turning black because then it will be brittle. And you definitely don't want this part being brittle, especially with all the force that you might be using to pull orbitals. So I'm going to go around that a couple more times, press it against a flat surface, and then I'm going to use my bearing and press against that ring against the, uh, the cap like that. And there we go. Now, if you feel any type of a, a weird uh, wobble in there, like it's not straight, um, you can push this out again. And that one has a slight, slight wobble. 
So I'm going to heat that up again. And then do this again and try to press straight down while doing it. And that feels much better. Now you don't have a whole heck of a lot of room in here between this and this part of the, the knob. So make sure that you don't have this cap being bigger than it needs to be. Take your uh, top part, which is your button uh, or your chip holder, and put your finger on this side where the slot is and then on the back side and pinch slightly. That's going to deform this a little bit that will then allow this to go in smoothly. Make sure the uh, the chip uh, or the light on the chip is facing you when you do this. Now this goes in next and there's two ways it can go in and there's only one way that's proper. So as, as you can see, this lip right here has kind of an angle to it where this one right here is just kind of a 90 degree. You want the angled part going in towards the button. And then this indentation, or I'm sorry, extrusion right here is gonna go into this gap. And that should just snap into place like that. Now, you'd feed the rope through the bearing holder like that, and then pull the bearing in, and then you're gonna start the bearing in to this uh, at a little bit of an angle, and then just pull it in and then make sure it bottoms out. And then you take the handle and then stick the rope in that direction. And now this will just snap on and all like that, which is pretty neat because you can store extra chips in there and just pop them out and not have to worry about changing chips out and fiddling with it when you're at a festival or whatever. They just pop out really easy. So that'll bottom out in that lip right there and then just snap it into place. And there you go. Super smooth. Now, if you're going to be doing a uh, uh, epoxy cap on the end of this, you you got to do the same thing where you get that uh, that uh, ring on first, and just dip the epoxy in there, and then you can kind of shape it a little bit. There's enough room in there that it can be wider than say if you're doing it inside the capsule. Uh, just make sure that it doesn't get uh, down further than the ring itself, and you should be good. Um, but as I said, you don't have as much room to work with, so the cap needs to be about that size right there at the very most. So for my setup, I would normally use the egg knob. I used to use swivels for a long time, and I loved the old setup that I had, but... I found that since I was doing tosses a lot and there's this unnatural break in the rope caused by the swivel, uh, sometimes the handle wouldn't land in my hand when I did a toss. So uh, Sergio Medina and I came out with the egg knob and I never looked back. Uh, well, I, I guess I shouldn't say I never did. Uh, I eventually looked back just recently in the making of this video and I was like, you know what? There were certain moves that I couldn't do with this setup that I could do with my old setup. And I would call those, you know, very beacony uh, orbital moves, ones that uh, are kind of just like fancy tricks that uh, most people probably don't do where your hand would have to be facing the opposite direction if your orbital is happening over here. Uh, with this inline setup, I can't do that because uh, once you get to that point, it doesn't want to spin anymore. So I decided, you know what, I'm gonna resurrect my old set. So something I made many, many years ago, and uh, it is a lot of work to do. But what this is, is it has a lead on the end here that allows me to turn my hand completely the opposite direction, and this keeps spinning. Um, this took a long time to make, and I would probably have to make a complete video on its own about this. That's why I didn't include it in here. So I've got a VPC rope with a Technor core, and then... Uh, kind of fancy uh, deep sea fishing ball bearing swivel that has uh, a swivel action on both sides. The way I did it was, um, I, so Technora is a double, or I'm sorry, a single braided rope where if you push it like that, it opens up and then you can feed the rope back through itself and then you're creating what's called a double braid rope. So what I did was I took a 3 16 inch rope like that. I had a long section here. I ran it through the uh, swivel and then I ran it right back through itself. And then I took the um, uh, VPC jacket and I slid it all the way down the length of the Technora. 
and then I took a piece of uh, or a, a heat shrink and slid it over. And then I wanted to bond the uh, the jacket to the core because the core is actually what's doing all the you know hard work since the swivel is attached to it. So what I did was I took some epoxy and then ran it all around there and it took my heat shrink and slid it over the wet epoxy. I uh, hit the heat shrink with the lighter and shrank it down, causing it to embed the, the epoxy into all the fibers and pretty much solidify the heat or the epoxy uh, right away. And then I just, you know, peeled the heat shrink off and I was left with that. Uh, pretty much seamless transition and this setup was bonkers it just it feels so buttery when you're spinning it and I'm really excited to you know start playing with this again so anyways that's my setup and that was the video if you have any comments or questions please leave it in the comment section below if you have any certain techniques you want to mention please let me know what those are I'm always curious to see what everybody else is doing if you want to hit that like and subscribe button, that will help me out. I really do appreciate it. Thanks a lot for watching, and I will see you next time.